Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Another exciting episode of Old Streams. Micah is driving me up to the mixing station. We're going to take a look here. and Yeah, it's to the left. There you go. Yep, right there. We need to take a look and see what we need. Now, uh, we've fast-forwarded overnight. I don't think our silage is going to be ready yet, but it might be. And so we're going to have to... We're going to fill up the cow food, and then we're going to sell the rest of the silage. We need to start making money with all that grass. Um, you know, I'm not going to make it like a mowing slog, but in order to get the money together for the um, for the uh, upcoming, uh, what do you call it, mod? The, the <laughs> oh my gosh, the big bud. Big bud, thank you. Uh, we're going to need potatoes and sugar beets. Okay, so we're going to do... We'll do sugar beets on this field up here. Um, we'll have to probably rent a, a cedar for that. Um, and, of course, we need silage. That's going to be there. So, all right, take me back. Let's, uh, I'm going to have you start seeding. Let's see. Um, all the other fields are ready to be seeded. And we're going to do, uh, this is awesome. You can drive me around while I'm looking at the, at the uh, oops, I am. <laughs> I can still kind of see it. <laughs> uh, looks like soybeans are on the high side right now. Soybeans are also really cheap to plant because they don't take a lot of seed. Uh, whereas canola, which is also on the high side, requires a lot. Uh, uh, Jared did a study and found that the soybeans actually use up more seed when you're planting. I'm sorry, the Canola uses up the most seed when you're planting. Each crop uses a different amount of seed when you plant. Um, and the canola is the worst. So, uh, but soybeans are one of the best. So we're going to go ahead and do soybeans on all the fields except for the one that's right there by the mixer. Um, so if you want, Micah, I'm going to set you loose. Uh, grab the 7R, the big tractor, and um, fill it up with seed and fertilizer and get out there and plant all the fields except for number 33 with, uh, with, um, whatever I told you. Sorry, to yeah, you know, thingy. Uh, and then I need to, let's see. Oh, man. See, I didn't think about this. We don't have a cultivator. So I'm probably going to have to rent a cultivator, too. Um, yep. So where's the other? I'm going to find the other John Deere. We're going to put down some okay. sugar beets. Dumb question, but do I just need to park next to this stuff to fill this thing up? Yes, you'll pull the you'll pull the cedar next to it, and you'll have to press it. You'll probably have to do it a couple times because each packet's not going to fill it up all the way. And you may have to shuffle some stuff around, too. Um, okay. Yeah, that's cedar. You should be done in no time. Why aren't you done yet? <laughs> no time flat. The only thing, my only complaint about this John Deere, the 4655 or whatever it is, um, is that the windows, they tried to do that where they make the windows kind of like uh, reflect stuff. Yes. And it's, it's really hazy looking out the windows. Like it's totally not clear. And I don't... It's probably because it's imported from an old model, but that's my big complaint with this one. I would like to upgrade that one of these to that 6000 series with double wheels, maybe, to replace the, one of these. But I'm going to keep this one. We do need a farm slug. So, Micah, do you like train games? Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about... Uh, Oh, the bunker silo's done. Sweet. We can work on that, too, once we're done planting. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, getting CSX Heavy Haul. Now, obviously, as you heard from that little exchange earlier, I'm broke. Um, <laughs> so I have I have sent in a request to them requesting the key for using key mailer. I know. I, I, I just added that to my wish list. <laughs> yeah, you're like, ahem. <laughs> I don't want to spend 40 bucks on it. From what I hear, it only has like eight scenarios. 
You're kidding. No, that was a big complaint. People, are, I mean, the frame rate thing is a big complaint. I don't really care about that. Like, I remember every simulator that I've played, including this one, when I first got it, got like 12 frames a second. I mean, you, you get used to the, you can, I can handle 30 frames. I and mean, people are complaining because it has to only, only goes up to 30 frames a second. And they're like, it only runs at 30 frames a second. I can't play it. It's like, come on. Dude, I remember I remember the flight simulator was like 50. You were lucky if you were getting 15 frames a second. You know what I mean? Right. That was considered smooth. You know, it's like, I don't... Anyway, uh, I get it. I mean, I understand people have all this expensive hardware and they're mad because it doesn't, you know... But at the same time, <laughs> it's if it, at 30, at 30 frames a second, it's not gorgeous, but it's still playable. <laughs> It's not like you can't play the game because it's... Anyway, there's a lot of moaning and groaning going on um, out there about it being 30 frames a second. And uh, so that's been a big complaint. But the other complaint, and definitely a much more valid complaint in my opinion, is that it's very, very limited on content. So there's only eight scenarios that you can run. And you're kind of just waiting on... They're kind of waiting on people to release more hoping that they'll, you know, you know, make more, like the community will make more scenarios. Mm-hmm. But there's no free roam. So you can only play the scenarios that they give you. Now, they're long. They're, like, you know, each scenario is anywhere from, like, 30 minutes to, like, two and a half hours. But... <laughs> uh, I, I sure hope they're not trying to think, oh, we'll make a whole game. Like, Angry Joe's biggest thing is... They make this big game, and then they slice it up and sell it as DLC. That's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. Because their last game was like that. They, but the last game at least had, you know, the, the Railworks, or Rail Sim, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that has, um, like, I think it comes with six or seven routes. Uh, and, you know, maybe like 40 or 50 scenarios. So it's like I've never gotten through all the scenarios, but it's uh it, it has more to it. The DLCs are really expensive too. I think somebody said if you bought if you bought all of the Train Sim and all of its DLCs, it would it, it would be it would be over seven hundred dollars. So it's really expensive. Yeah, I mean the train a single engine is twenty bucks, and over each route is like a, each route is. 60 or 70 bucks. So I have a feeling that is exactly what they're doing. And I don't know. I mean, I get it. But they should give you a good base game to start with. And not just like one layout. And that's that's the, the whole idea. It's like they're calling it CSX Heavy Hall. So it's just revolving around, you know, Sandpatch. It should be called CSX Heavy Wallet. Heavy Wallet, right, yeah. <laughs> I'm still going to get it. Like, if I don't get an answer for them by the time I get my next YouTube check at the end of this month, I'll buy it because it'll be good for my channel. It's not going to, I mean, I'll get 1,000 a, a to 2,000 views on the video, and that'll be enough to pay. It'll pay for itself. But, you know, I, I think that um, it just, it's, uh, um, I'd like it sooner, you know, but it's just, it's expensive. It's I, I'm having a hard time, you know, justifying plopping down 40 bucks on it. When it seems like it's not comp- not totally complete, you know. Yeah. So I'll let you know. <laughs> Is it worth it? Because <laughs> I don't know. If it truly only has eight scenarios, that's really disappointing. Yeah, I, I was I was a little, I'm a little shocked. So twenty thirty one twenty six planted with soybeans. Yep, all of the big ones. Let's see. It's going to be. It's going to be, yeah, 31, 26, and number one. one. Yep. And number one's going to take you the most time, because that's obviously the huge field. I think I'll do 26 last in case I run out of material. Okay, and if you want to, you know, like if you get burned, you can always hire a worker, and then we'll we'll start doing the silage, too, because that's ready. What? I am the worker. You are. <laughs> I got no problem with hiring workers. Any money. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we got forty-five thousand right now. We should be good. We'll we'll get through the night. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna, but I want to do some farm work first. So, <clears throat> I 
Yeah, so I'm excited. It'll be fun to go to the, the RC show. Like I said, mostly it's vendors. But they do have some demonstrations, and they have a lot of... Uh, oh, and it's going to be a nice day, actually. It looks like it's going to be... Uh, yeah. It's going to be cold. I did find out today it's going to be sunny, but no yep. rain. And like four mile an hour winds, too, which is great for flying. So you actually could fly afterwards. <laughs> I do live out in the country, so... There we go. <laughs> we'll go f freezing and flying. <laughs> freezing and flying. <laughs> No, those little lipo batteries do not like cold weather at all. They don't. Uh, they they'll fly. You'll lose about twenty percent power, and they only last about like a minute or two when it's cold out. Oh wow! It has to be about fifty degrees for them to work well. The drones not not as much because the drone battery is pretty big. The larger the battery gets, the better it can kind of like. What's the word I'm looking for? Like self perpetuate because it heats up. And then it'll stay warm enough that it can operate. Okay. But if it's below if it's below thirty degrees, then it, it they don't operate well either. Like nothing operates well at those temperatures. Yeah. See, one thing I don't know. I don't. I haven't been in RC stuff in a long time, so I'm hoping you can give me a, an idea which frequencies are the best or which manufacturers to stay away from. There's. So. It seems like I've had really, I've had bad and good luck with Horizon Hobby. But the one thing I will say about Horizon is they stand behind their products. So if you bought something and it's, it doesn't work, like this airplane is a perfect example. They sent me a new motor because it was, it was acting. I was having that problem where it was shutting off early. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell the whole story because it's, <laughs> I don't know that I've done it on this series. And people are going to be like, what's he talking about? So I bought an airplane, uh, a little micro airplane, and I bought four batteries. I bought two of them from the hobby store and two of them from the actual company like from their website and uh, I went out to fly it and it was cold it was probably like 40 45 but it wasn't freezing but it was cold and the batteries on all four of them they, they turned off after a minute of flight the airplane would shut the motor off it has a, a protect and if it detects a low voltage it'll shut the the motor off to protect the battery and um, so then you you get a little bit of power enough that you can bring the airplane back around and land it sometimes it depends on where you are like if you're close to the ground and that happens which i happen to be one of the times uh you're going in because <laughs> by the time you get the throttle to reset so that you can use it again you're already on the ground um and that happened to me once but uh it wasn't bad like i didn't do any damage to the airplane i was able to save it but uh that's a little frustrating and a little unnerving when that happens when you're trying to fly so um the battery should last three to five minutes most the way that I fly, usually I can get batteries to last at least five minutes, because I fly real gently. I'm not like I don't pound the throttle all the way and let it run full throttle the whole time. I I tend to fly at about half throttle and I kind of float around, and then I'll speed it up a little bit and do a trick and then back off again and kind of float and then you know do another trick and I don't I'm not just like Wee! like the whole time. So for the batteries to be acting like that, I was like, well maybe it's too cold. So I took the airplane home and waited until it was 70 degrees out and so we had another afternoon where it was 70 degrees it was sunny it was beautiful it's like two weeks ago and i took the airplane out and i took off and sure enough after a minute of flight the battery shut off tried the next one after a minute of flight battery shuts off every single battery so i i knew it wasn't the batteries because they came from two different sources you know like if it, i thought if i could have gotten all bad batteries maybe from one place but to have different batteries from different locations like it's not it's not the batteries. So I called the hobby. I called them. I'm like, listen, this is what I'm having go on. The guy's like, I am so sorry. He's like, that sounds to me like your motor is bad. What's happening is the motor is drawing too much voltage from the engine or from the ESC. And the ESC is detecting that it's drawing too much voltage and it, it's doing the over voltage protect. So in order to, to save the ESC, the motor is shutting, the, shutting itself down. Okay. So he's like, I'm going to send you a new motor. So they sent me a new motor, but... The one that they sent me doesn't fit. It was the wrong. It was the right motor, but the pigtail coming off the engine to plug it in, or the motor to plug it in, was at the wrong angle, and so it wouldn't fit the motor housing that I have. And I'm like, ah. So I called them again. I'm like, listen, and, and you know the motor's like thirty dollars. It's the motor cost almost as much as like half as much as the airplane. And I'm like, listen, I I hate to do this to you, but the motor does. You guys sent me the wrong motor. I'll send it back, but you know, can you send me the right part? And the guy's like, listen, he's like, I'm so sorry about this. He's like, we're just sending you a new airplane. 
So they gave me a whole wow. new. So I haven't flown this one. That's what came in today. That's that. That was what I was talking about. That airplane came in today. Um, but you know, they stand behind their products, and I've had that kind of stuff happen before with them. Where like I had a one airplane that had a bad motor, and they just sent me a new motor. You know, it's like if they out of the box, if it's not working right, they'll replace it. Now, if you fly it for a year, then they're going to be like, well, this is the part number you need to buy. <laughs> you know. Once it goes out of warranty, they don't, they're do not they not going to stand behind it after that. But they're really good about helping and stuff, and they're really nice guys. And, and I, So they make um, – Horizon Hobby also makes, like, Team Losi, which is all trucks and cars. And okay. they also uh, sell and support Traxxas. And right now, I would say if you're getting into it, Traxxas is, is the best. All of their stuff is, is pretty cheap. Um, like most remote control cars on the market right now range between three and five hundred dollars most of the Traxxas is entry-level stuff it's like 220 bucks so they're on the low side as far as expenses go um, they're also everything that Traxxas sells is waterproof oh nice. yeah so you can have fun like you don't now I if you get it wet I would take you know brake clean like the brake clean stuff uh -huh. and very carefully when you're done with your run just spray a little brake clean in the motor and then run it and then spray a little bit more and then run it because that motor will eventually start to corrode and rust if you don't do that but everything else is and the, the motors are only like 20 bucks so if you fry a motor you can always just pick up pick up a new motor like seth jumped into the river <laughs> And that fried the motor. <laughs> like immediately, it was like. Bzzz. I thought you said it was waterproof. Well, there's waterproof and there's waterproof. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go swimming with it. Um, well, if it ain't tested, I don't want it. Though. That's right. No. Okay. Waterproof, yes. Submarine, no. Um, <laughs> so actually, theoretically, you should be able to do that. I was actually surprised that it fried. Um, I'd like to get a truck, like like a monster truck. Is I'm thinking it's high enough off the ground that I can actually bend over and grab it. Yes. Now or the downside is. I can make a ramp and have it drive up a bit. Well, there you go. <laughs> the the downside is, you got to be careful when you're cornering because they will tip. Monster trucks tend to roll over pretty easily. So that's the only downside is you'll be flipping it a lot. <laughs> well, luckily my feet, my foot pedals are uh, electrical. So oh. Yep. Like a <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. That's awesome. Yep. So, and I will tell you this. This is really cool. I've been, I've almost been thinking myself about buying one, but I don't think I will. But uh, they just came out this year with a Bigfoot. So, oh, yeah. Traxxas just released Bigfoot like a month ago. It just came out, and it's really cool. Yeah. Yep, the old Ford body, like the the F F two fifty or whatever it is from like, oh, yeah, yep, the seventy nine body, yep, with and it even has like the engine popping out the front and everything, like it's really cool looking, <laughs> and it's I think it's two twenty, and it comes with everything you need to run it. It's got the the motor, it's got I mean it's got the charger, it's got the radio, it's got the battery. Um, the only thing that you could improve on it, and it, the nice thing is, oh, they come with two point four gigahertz radios now, so you don't even have to worry about frequencies. Oh, okay. It's a 250 channel radio that automatically pairs with the truck. So, you can just run it. There's no there's no worrying about other people running around you and stuff. There's no <coughs> I mean, sometimes there's glitches. But <coughs> See, I Pardon me. Oh yeah. Uh, but I <coughs> But me and my dad were, you know, we we're looking at my dad's like, if you ever lost control of that thing, and it, you know, <coughs> some kid's riding his bike down the street, and the lawnmower goes off. So, I just wasn't sure about the frequencies. <coughs> yeah, in fact, I would think even the mowers are probably 2.4. Now, I, <coughs> my goodness, I swallowed my tea wrong. Um, I don't know that, um... You would necessarily, gosh, would you, I mean, you can't, <clears throat> if it goes far enough away, you can lose control of it. <laughs> right. Or if the battery dies, or if there's some kind of glitch, 
those things do happen, but... <coughs> and all the time that I've been driving the trucks, the ones with the 2.4 gigahertz radios, I've never had a problem with them running off. So, <coughs> unless there's like, like I had um, one that has a really old ESC, and <coughs> when the battery gets old, it'll do that, but it's it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Well, the mower doesn't have a battery. It's got an alternator on it. Yeah, I would think the motor would. I think that I would think that the uh, that it would the mower would be fine. I don't know. It depends on what frequency it runs on, though. That is a good question. What's up, Vi? She'd be a very good what horse learner. Yep. You know what horses is like? They like oats. And then, and then for dessert, it would be um, apple, uh, apple. Oh, yeah? The sweet. You get an apple for dessert? Uh-huh. Yeah, you got to feed horses oats, though. Horses like oats, and it's good for them. Can you do me a favor? Can you please uh, rinse that out? one apple is in bathroom. Give me some ice water, please. Rinse is that out. Apple <coughs> no, apples aren't. Apples are good for horses, I guess. I don't know. I would think so. Too much of anything's never good, but they're sugary. <laughs> yeah, but horses horses can be jerks though. <laughs> Those jerk horses. <laughs> they can be. They can be very ordinary and stubborn. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <clears throat> I had a friend uh, years ago who got she got kicked in the head. And was in the hospital for like two months. <clears throat> like it was bad. It almost killed her. And it was her own horse. It was, you know, this is a horse that she raised. Mm-hmm. And uh, the horse just got, she got behind it and was, it was, you know, the horse didn't know she was there and it's, she spooked it. <clears throat> and bam, next thing she knows, she woke up in the hospital. Yeah, I got friends who raise horses and, uh, <clears throat> you know, they can be ornery. Oh, especially racehorses. They're pretty. They got pretty rough tem- temperaments, don't they? I don't know <coughs> about racehorses. My aunt, my aunt owned a. They owned a racehorses, but we never went up to those. Yeah, <laughs> like they were mean. <laughs> no, we just never. You know, they weren't riding horses. And, you know, oh, true. They just hang out, hanging out horses. Yeah. So I mean, so until it's time to race, then they go. Yeah, see, they they just owned them. I don't think they actually went did anything with them. They just owned them and and uh, um, raced them. Every had them raced so often. I mean, we were never invited or nothing to. But our friends who raised horses, poor horses and stuff. Uh, <coughs> them and stuff. I know one time when I was working in Amish country, um, they had a <coughs> they were selling this huge horse facility like it it's called like willow down or something like that and it's where all the amish people would come and they auction their horses and so <coughs> the uh, the realtor that was selling it wanted me to come and photograph it on a day when there was actually an auction going on so that we could get you know oh, nice. some pictures of the you know what they do there and it was really cool so like the you know when they sh- when they show the horses off they they have a huge uh track almost but it's basically a really long driveway that goes between all the barns and then it has like dog bones at either end so these guys <coughs> tie the horses up to these you know the, these little Amish carts and I don't want to say they race them but they go pretty fast and they run the horses up and down this driveway and there's like like 40 or 50 horses all the time running up and down this driveway with carts on them and uh, it was really cool and then, and then they bring them in. They have a you know like an auction pen inside, where there's like a like an oval track, and they bring they bring each horse out and walk them around the track, and everybody can look at the horse, and then they ride them around and stuff, and people bid on the horses. And I I didn't know this, but the Amish are I guess famous for for race horses and stuff. Like a lot of people go to the Amish for horses. Huh. So <clears throat> there's all kinds of people there bidding on those horses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> and they're Dutchmen. <laughs> and noodles. And noodles, right, the restaurant. 
And so uh, it was really it was a cool experience to be able to do that. And but while I was there, there was a horse that was out behind the paddock, like like behind the auction house, and he was just out in like this paddock. And <clears throat> so I was taking pictures, and I walked up to, to the horse. And I'm like, "Hey, horse!" And it came over, and then it was like nuzzling me, and so I was like petting it, and it was it was really friendly. <laughs> And then someone walks up, get away from that. <coughs> yeah, it's got rabies. <laughs> no, I think it wanted carrots, but. <laughs> but I was just like, wow. That's right. <laughs> it was cool, though. It was a really neat experience. But they are intimidating because they're so big. Yeah. <coughs> it's a little overwhelming when you get near them. Yeah, our friends, uh, they're in Arkansas. We went down and. His stallion is blind in one eye. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so I went I went to go feed him because, uh, you know, I grew up when I was little. When a little boy, he was around. And so, you know, now that I'm like, you know, but I'm now in a wheelchair. But I go to wheel up to give him a, an apple, and he just kind of stops and tilts his head with his good eye, and he's just kind of like staring at me like, what the heck? <laughs> oh yeah, like it's never seen a wheelchair before, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, he's kind of like just staring at me, and he kind of gets a little closer. He starts sniffing my feet, and then I'm just like, and the thing is that my right hand is where his blind eye is, and I'm trying to show him the apple, and it isn't until he gets his head cocked enough that you can see the apple. <laughs> he's like, oh, kind of ah, because he doesn't have a voice very well. So. Oh. <laughs> You're like, is uh, is this dude gonna knock me over here in a minute? <laughs> is he thinking about knocking me over? <laughs> well, I think if he wanted to, he would have done it right away. But right. <laughs> Flash really never really worked with force. He was he was uh, spunky. You know, he had a lot of energy when you first get on him and stuff, and you'd have to uh, run him around a bit. Uh, he almost killed Ed, because uh, uh, but it was Ed's fault. Um, he went, they went to go ride, and he was going to take Flash. And, uh, because not, not too many people can ride him because he's blind in one eye, because, uh, he won't trust a lot of people. Oh, I see. So he relies <coughs> on you, the rider, to, to, to really guide him where he needs to go. And, uh, um, but he got on him, and he said, I didn't, I didn't run him around enough, get the energy out of him, and he reared up after he got on him, and, uh, he fell backwards with that on him, but what they didn't, what the horse didn't know is, there was like a mostly buried rock in the ground, and it was just the top of the rock, you know, because you know when you mow the lawn, the mower would go over it. <coughs> right. But when he landed, Dad landed on the rock, and then the horse sat on him. And oh. He broke his hip oh. From the pressure, yeah. <coughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So he he goes, if I would have been on the dirt, I would have been okay. Because the ground would gave enough, but that right. would land on a rock, and then he sat on me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sit on him on purpose, like he was falling over. No, no he just reared up and, <clears throat> and, back, and then he sat down on him on accident. <laughs> oh my gosh. So now what happens when that, I mean, how did he get help? Well, luckily his wife, Joyce, was, was home, and uh, uh, she come out. You know, he's passed out on the... Because he went to try to get up, but he, he passed out from the pain. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I need help. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, thankfully, somebody found him quick, you know. I think then all of a sudden the pain hit. Jeez. Yeah. I remember, yeah, my brother... Okay, so my brother-in-law worked in construction, and <clears throat> he was uh, working on a roof, and... <clears throat> they didn't nail it down properly. Like you're supposed to nail the the board, the two by fours down, or not mm -hmm. two by fours. The f what are those called? The the sheets, like the eight eight by four or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, sheets of plywood that they put down, and then they nail the roofing to that. Um, one of them wasn't nailed down, <clears throat> and he stepped on it, and um, he ended up surfing off the roof two two stories, oh, and no. and fell and landed like on his ankles. And um, <clears throat> he's like, yeah, he's like, as I was lying there, he's like, well, either I'm going to heaven right now and this is going to be great or this is going to hurt a lot. <laughs> 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 he 
It goes, and then I felt the pain coming up my legs, and I'm like, it's going to be the hurt. <laughs> and uh, he dislocated both of his ankles. Uh, <clears throat> the way he landed somehow, uh, they took all the brunt. So in a good and bad way, you know. Um, right. He didn't break any bones, surprisingly. But uh, <clears throat> everything, you know, shifted, and, and it took him, I want to say, a good six months before he could walk again. Um, he was... I mean, and he's a, he was a really healthy guy. He still is. He's like, he's one of those guys that only ever eats like protein drinks and then like raw eggs mixed in. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm so he's, I know me too, but he just, he's like super healthy and like, you know, <clears throat> so he, because of that, he recovered a lot from the doctor was telling him he probably wouldn't walk for at least a year. Right. So, but he was up and walking after six months because he was in such good shape. Um, but it was, I remember going, we went on vacation um, like we had scheduled a vacation to come visit him in Kansas. He lived in Kansas, and so we had all you know our whole vacation was planned around this. <laughs> and and then he fell off the roof like two days before we were supposed to go. And so we we're like, well, we just won't go, you know. And he's like, no, no, come. On. He he lived with his friend Ron, and uh, like a guy kind of took him in when he was a teenager, and and uh, you know looked after him because his you know my my wife my ex wife came from a really you know messed up family, you know drunk dad abusive like that kind of stuff and you know patrick patrick became a christian when he was like 18 years old and the dad was trying to kill him over it like would like would beat him like would beat him up and stuff and so he uh as an eight or he might have been 17 but he got it the social workers to give him an emancipation so then he just moved out to kansas with my my mother-in-law's family and uh ron was one of the friends that kind of took him in and you know said okay well i'll i'll father you for a while and kind of ra- help raise you and stuff and and so did a good job yes seth i'm fighting gammon can you hey seth can you bring me an ice water please violet was supposed to do that about a half an hour ago listen i need it really bad i like choked on my tea <coughs> and so um anyway uh so we would stay at ron's house and visit like that's where we would vacation so <laughs> He was like, no, come on out, you know, like, I don't want to, you know, like, I, I still want you guys to come. I, I don't, you know, I haven't seen you guys in a year or whatever, and I'd like to see you. You know, so we went out, and he was he was in so much pain. I mean, I felt so bad for him, you know. It's just he like, drip, he he, like hey, yeah, <laughs> no, he was already out of the hospital, but he was, like, yeah, pain meds and, like, you know, in a wheelchair. So we were wheeling him around and stuff, and, and he just, at times he was having fun, but at other times he was like, I just can't believe how much this hurts uh patrick when he fell off the roof patrick, your your uncle okay. Sorry. <laughs> here put that down yeah. well seth wasn't alive did mark and ryan were little when all that happened but uh yeah so he uh needless to say he quit that career when that was Yay. that was the last time he did construction thank you violet uh he did he moved on to something else I'm gonna go play the what's the matter hun i'm gonna go play in the week okay have fun <laughs> but uh, he, uh, my whole point was, what was my point? <laughs> I had a point that I was getting to, and now I've completely lost it. So he fell off the roof, here's his ankles. Blah, blah, blah. Make sure you put the nails in where they belong. Yeah, right. <laughs> the point of the, no, I think I just was saying because of, like, the horror story, like, falling off and being, like. The pain. Yeah, the pain and lucky that you didn't die. You know, like, it, it could have been a lot worse. And, you know, he was, I, I, I do remember, though, we had one funny thing when he was, when he was, like he would he was dragging himself into the bedroom like he would he would like drag his legs behind him and kind of you know push himself along the carpet like with his back back to the direction he was headed right. so kind of like backward scooting and he, he was in pain he's like ah ah and i'm like dude where are you going like i'll help you get where you know what do you need and he's like he's like oh i must ch-. he's like i have to check my email <laughs> <laughs> so from that we always now every time you can every time i see him because I, I looked at him and i said must check email <laughs> so like ever since then every time i see him that's the first thing he says he's like must check email <laughs> it's life or death <laughs> oh so funny yes violet what i did not understand Oh, you get to sleep in here tonight. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Ryan, each kid. Uh, <clears throat> Ryan always sleeps in my room, my 17-year-old. He was sleeping down the basement, and when when my ex-wife left, I'm like, you know what, Ryan, you don't... Because, you know, he was getting, like, allergy problems and stuff, and 
he didn't. He had room in Mark's room, but he didn't. He just liked to go down there and sleep. And I'm like, you can sleep in my room, dude. And so, he sleeps in my room now. But he, uh, but then we we let one kid sleep in my room each night. <laughs> so it's a nice Violet's turn. She's all excited. Give me five, Violet. You get to squish. No, yeah, with the snoring. All the snoring. That's right. <laughs> Like a dying duck. Like a mixture of a pig and a horse. Like a mixture of a pig and a horse. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes. Oh, what? Ha oh, you pressed a button, Violet. Violet just turned my cultivator off. Violet. She has a. Uh, um, she actually doesn't snore as bad anymore. She was when they all had that cold. She had it for a long time, and it. She was snoring like a horse. No, I will say, getting back to like this game, it is a lot easier to plow these big fields with cab view. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's like you get into a rhythm, you realize how far away you need to be, and it's just like you can just keep running. Oh, especially when the field is plowed, because you, you realize how many wheel ruts you can go over. Yeah. When you don't have the field plowed, it's a little bit harder, because when it's cultivated, then it's harder. But that... that <coughs> cultivator that you're using, you know, cult or that cedar you're using does the cultivation, so mm -hmm. it does make it a lot easier. Whoops, oh, I missed. Yeah, Dang it. I am on old streams. I'm mostly <coughs> like a lot of times I'm out of the cab view because there's trees and things, and but I'm just sitting here thinking I'm going cab view, and I was doing I've just been doing this a while. I'm like, wow, this is just smooth, and I'm not missing anything. It's nice. You know what I'm thinking, Micah? I'm thinking we never plowed this field. <laughs> what, the one I'm on? No, the one I'm on. <laughs> Rats! That's our, yeah, I know. That's a mismanagement. That's my fault. <clears throat> All right, well, that's okay. We're going to just leave it for now because I'm just, I'm going to do the sugar beets and then we'll plow it after we're done with sugar beets. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this exciting cultivation episode of Farm Sim 17, John Deere Farm, Small Town, USA. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up. Micah, do you want to say good night? Good night. <laughs> Here we go. Bye. <laughs>